Hello and a very happy new year to you. I hope that Christmas has been a time of celebration, of peace, of hope, of joy, and that as you've had time to journey uh, with the shepherds, with Mary and Joseph, with the wise men to, to, to Bethlehem, at least in your imagination, that you've encountered God afresh in this Christmas season. And that as it's been a different Christmas from usual, quieter, less busy, that maybe you've had more space and time for God. So we come to a new year. And as we reach this threshold, I guess more than ever before, we're filled with a mixture of apprehensions and fears, but also hopes and desires as we look back on what has been a very, very tough year and look forward to at least some improvements in 2021. You may recall that uh, just before Christmas, I shared a message where I reflected that really for many of us, 2020 has been in some ways a parallel kind of experience to the people of God being taken off into exile. You can find that message on our YouTube channel if you've not seen it. I believe that 2021 is the year for returning from Covid exile. And just as the people of God who came back from Babylon were not the same as the people that went into exile. In fact, it was a completely different generation that came back. And they were changed and their pattern of, of, of life and worship was different. So it is for us. 2021, if we return from Covid exile, is not a year to just go back to the way things are before, but to be different, reimagined, renewed, resurrected. One of our local church denominations is telling all their churches in 2021 to consider this year as being a year for replanting the church or relaunching the church. And I want to challenge all of our Baptist churches, I want to challenge you to think of 2021 as being the year for replanting your church, relaunching your church. Not the same church that was, but a different, renewed, resurrected church that's learnt lessons from the pandemic that is somehow uh, able to be different in ways that God would want you to be. One of the things that's certainly true is that whenever the restrictions are lifted and we're able to meet freely in our buildings, if we have them, we won't be the same people. We will have lost some along the way, whether through death or through moving away or people we've simply lost touch with. But we will have gained others. People who've come to faith, people who we've made contact with through the pandemic, the relationships that are built up. So we will be a different people. We will also be a different community, different needs, different opportunities, different connections as a result of the pandemic. All kinds of ongoing challenges that we will be facing together. And so because we are going to be so different when we gather again fully, it is worthwhile actually doing a relaunch, thinking about a relaunch, thinking about starting afresh from scratch. Your renewed church, your different church, your different community. And that's what we're going to think about over the next few minutes. We don't know when it will happen. It might be just after Easter. It might be Pentecost. It might be the summer. But I want to challenge you to actually think of a date. And you may need to be flexible with the planning. But think of a date when you might like to relaunch replant your church or maybe even plant something new in 2021 and to spend the coming months through the winter and into the spring actively preparing and planning to do this. Well let's turn to a Bible passage now to help us in our thinking. A Bible passage about the exiles returning to Jerusalem and some of the challenges that they faced as they came back to a very different picture from what they'd left behind. It's from the prophet Haggai, chapter 2, and the first nine verses. And my lovely wife, Barbara, is going to read this for us. The prophet Haggai, chapter 2, verses 1 to 9, reading from the New International Version. On the 21st day of the seventh month, 
the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. Ask them, who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. And work. For I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. And my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. So let's reflect upon that passage. The prophet Haggai is motivating the people, the leadership especially, to get active in rebuilding the temple. Now, the danger is we can just think in terms of buildings. We've been out of our buildings, we could look forward to going back into our buildings. But I want to try and remind us that we need to break this dependency and domination of buildings in our thinking as church. Church is the people. We are the temple of God. We are the temple in whom the Spirit dwells. That's the parallel that Jesus makes and the Apostle Paul make in the New Testament. That we don't need temples, we don't need buildings actually. It's the people of God who are the real house of God. So as you read this passage and you hear about the house, think about the people of God, think about the church congregation, not your building. Your building is a tool or is a resource, but maybe actually it's a hindrance and an obstacle in some ways. Many of our church buildings are not really fit for purpose for the age in which we live. Many of them are not welcoming and attractive works of architecture. Many of them are not suitable for the kind of way we might need to be church in the 21st century, the 2021s and beyond. So please try to divorce your thinking, at least in part, from the church building, at least in these next few months. Haggai says that at present it may seem as though it's nothing. And you may feel at times that you are a shadow of what you've been. That the, the life and the existence and the uh, the way of being church is, is just been lost. That there's so little going on. That even when you can meet, it's just not like normal. You can't sing. You can't hug. You can't chat. You can't do all the things that we expect to do as a fellowship of God's people. When we do have fellowship, it's often online, and that's not the same. It feels as though we are not what we were, just as the people of God might have felt exactly that same way. And the prophet speaks to them and says, yeah, that's what you feel like. But, and there is a but in this passage, there is a hidden life which is still there. A hidden life which abounds, a hidden resource, a hidden opportunity. That God is still with his people. God is still the God of the universe. God is still working his purposes out. And he will enable a rebuilding to happen. And there's all kinds of ways in which the life of God continues to abound in the midst of this pandemic where God is opening up opportunities for mission, where God is helping us to, to draw closer to him, where God is enabling us to follow Christ more wholeheartedly, 
challenge us to work in our lives, where God is reshaping the church slowly, step by step, day by day, week by week. That hidden life does abound. The prophet talks about a shaking going on. And it's not just the shaking of the exile. It says there's going to be more shaking into the future, the heavens and the earth. You've felt the earth shake, but even the heavens are going to shake into the future. If you think the pandemic's been bad, well, let's be honest, there will be even greater shakings into the future. Whether we live to experience them or whether they come after our lifetime, we don't know. But there will always be crises. There will always be challenges. And God allows these things to happen so that, as the writer of the Hebrews puts it, what is unshakable may remain. What is shakable, what is unimportant, what is a distraction can be taken out of the way. I hope and pray that through the pandemic, some of the shakable things, some of the unimportant things have been come, that's important, have been taken out of our lives. And that the unshakable relationship with God, the work of God, is more important to us. Use these next few months to focus your energy on the unshakable things. And then the prophet says, now is the time for rebuilding, for starting afresh. And the temple, the physical building they were going to rebuild would look very similar, maybe, to what had gone before. But it was different. It wasn't maybe quite the same dimensions, quite the same materials. The, the building pattern was slightly different. And so as we rebuild and relaunch the church, it's an opportunity, yes, for something that is in continuity with what's gone before, but is also different, reimagined, re-envisioned, a little bit more radical, a little bit more closer to God, a little bit more fit for purpose for the age in which we live. Because let's face it, folks, a lot of our churches have not really been effective in mission over the last 10, 20 years. We've been in decline. We've seen people leaving. We've seen our congregations ageing. We have not been effective in mission. And we need to reimagine church and be different if uh, we are to be fresh and vibrant and alive and not just go the way of so many churches that close and die and are no more. But we have this hope from the prophet that what is going to be rebuilt that what is going to be renewed is going to be even more glorious than before. And have faith, friends. Have faith that if God is leading you to reimagine, rebuild, replant, relaunch church, he will do it in a more glorious, in a more exciting, in a more dynamic way than you've experienced before. Can you believe for this in 2021 that God has a more wonderful version of church for you to be part of? And God, through the prophet, promises that he will provide all of the resources that are needed. All the silver and the gold is mine. Every financial resource, every material resource, I will bring it in, says God. Even if you don't feel you've got much in the way of resources, even if you feel your resources might be diminished because of the pandemic, actually God has still got it all. He's calling you to trust in him, whatever he calls you to. He will equip you for and provide for. He is a generous God. And then the final reflection on the passage would simply be that it takes effort and determination. The people have got to work hard. They've got to keep going and persevere in spite of opposition. They've got to raise the funds. They've got to get in the materials, organise the work. And there will be hard work involved in relaunching and reimagining church. It's not an easy process. The easy thing is to go back to the way we were before. But folks, if that wasn't working, what's the point? To change takes energy. To think outside the box takes effort. To be a bit more radical does take a challenge. Are you willing to go on this journey? What is the new kind of church that God might be wanting to relaunch in 2021? I believe it's a more nimble church, a more flexible church, a church that operates at a smaller scale. It's not just about everything being about us all together, but maybe we meet in smaller groups and do things in smaller units. We're more flexible, we're more adaptable, we're more able to go with the flow of the pandemic and whatever follows on from it. 
Secondly, a more prayerful church, a more dependent upon God church, a church that is better balanced between doing and being, that isn't just frenetically busy all the time, but has space for God, space to seek God, space and time for God to be even more at the centre. I hope and pray that we'll be a more missional church, that we will be more closely in touch with and relating to our community because of the opportunities that have opened up in pandemic and we'll do so afterwards as well that we'll be driven by the call of God to serve his kingdom in our communities more than ever before and that will shape the way we are church and the way we do church there will also be a more scattered church not just confined to or confined by our buildings but we will recognize the value of being scattered and we will equip and resource one another to be the scattered church that will think about what it is to be a Christian seven days a week not just the one day of the week whenever we come to worship. This new kind of church will also be a more collective church where we share the work of ministry and mission where we involve everybody. There's less focus and dependency upon ministers where ministers job is not to do everything and to take the lead in everything but to equip others for the works of service and to lead. And that we are bold in allowing new people into leadership. Maybe people who are new to the faith. Maybe people who we think don't have the skills, but who can grow into these roles and responsibilities. Because God has given you good people. Everybody has a place. Everybody has a role to play. And finally, this new kind of church will be a more discipleship focused church. That we will be looking That's how we follow Jesus Christ, how we radically obey the call of Christ, willing to live differently from the world around us, willing to live differently from the way maybe we lived before, less materialistic, less uh, stressed and pressured, less focused on ourselves and more on him and others. I just want to give a word of critique and warning because as I've observed our churches through the last nine months of pandemic, I've seen lots of wonderful things, lots of faithfulness, lots of determination. And I want to thank you for staying faithful to God all the way through. But on the other hand, I don't think we've learned all the lessons that God wants us to learn from this COVID exile. Many of us are still trying to be the same kind of church we were before. We're still far too busy. We're still putting far too energy into Sunday worship rather than everything else that God calls us to. We're still too minister dominated. We're still maybe confined in our imagination or our thinking. We can only see one way of being church. We're still lacking in vision for mission. We're still failing to equip and resource the whole congregation for mission. But there is still time to change. There is still more work that God wants to do. And this year provides an opportunity. These next few months, before we relaunch, provide opportunity. Will you take this opportunity that 2021 brings? And to help you in your thinking, just to finish off the whole talk, a few questions to take away. Firstly, I'd like you to take time over these next few months to ask, what has God been saying to you? To spend time, again, to seek God if you need to, but to discern what is God's message to your church. It's not for me to tell you, it's for you to do that work and to discern from God. And the whole congregation can do this. Encourage everybody to be part of this process and sift and reflect and come together around around those key things that God has for you. And focus on the things that God is saying. Forget everything else. You can forget everything I say or anybody else says. Focus on what God is saying to you. Second question is, what might a new church look like if you were to actually start from scratch? Just imagine that you haven't existed before and that your group of people, your congregation with the resources that you have, the gifts, the opportunities, the the connections into the community... You were choosing to be a church the first time. How would you go about starting church? 
And maybe that can give you a few indications as to what a relaunch might look like in 2021. If you were starting from scratch, you might not do things the way you have been doing. Maybe some things genuinely need to die and be consigned to history as a result of this pandemic. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to start with a completely clean sheet of paper and reimagine church from first principles onwards. That takes time, of course, but you've got time in these coming months. Thirdly, what is the changed context in which you are now serving? How is your community different as a result of this pandemic? What are the new needs that you've become aware of? What are the changed uh, opportunities, maybe? Where are the doorways where you can engage in new ways? Who are the new people that you've connected with? Who are the people you've lost touch with? Because your context has changed, then the church needs to change to adapt to that situation. If you just stay the way you were, you will be out of touch with where your community is. Your community has changed over this last year and you will need to adapt to serve and to be in engaging well with the mission of God with your community. Fourthly, do an audit of what resources God has given to you, particularly the people resources that you have. And I want to ask you, who are your pioneers? We want to encourage more pioneering across our region. People who are willing to go out there beyond the boundaries of church to, to bring the gospel in new ways, in, 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 in new situations where the church hasn't currently been reaching. People who are bold and willing to take risks. People who want to try new things, who you will support. Have you got pioneers in your church? Why not try to release your pioneers in 2021 and pioneer some new things? Who are your prophets? Who are the ones who really are uh, able to guide you in terms of what God is saying? Who are your entrepreneurs? Who are the people who have ideas? Who are the organisers? These are the kind of skills that we need in these days. Yes, we do need pastors and we do need teachers, but it's these other gifts that are also important. Can you bring these to the fore as well? And who are your prayers, your intercessors, the people who will help you to keep focused on God? And then finally, how can you turn a vision into reality? I want to encourage you to be realistic. If you do reimagine church, if you do want to relaunch church, be realistic. Don't have a vision that actually does not relate to who you are. And part of the assessing and auditing is to say, well, we can't do a lot of things because we don't have X, Y and Z. So many churches are trying to be something else, a different kind of church from what is natural to who they are. Maybe looking at bigger churches and trying to replicate what bigger churches do when you have less resources. It's stupid. It's foolish. It's 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 not the way to go. Smaller churches have unique gifts and can do things differently. We can meet in different places. We can operate in different ways. We don't have to be like the big churches. And likewise, big churches have their own patterns to adopt that relate to the size and where they're dispersed into the different communities they relate to. Make sure that whatever vision develops and whatever plan develops, it's realistic to who you are. It goes with the flow of who you are and what God is calling you to. But also, do plan with boldness. Do plan with vision. Don't be too British and say, this is why it won't work. Be a little bit more like the pioneers in the new world. If you go to the States or, or New Zealand or Australia, a place like that, they have much more of a can-do mentality. And just to conclude, if you need help and support on this journey, we have an association team back up to full strength. And we're happy to, to journey with you and to help you and assist you. We've got the Reimagine initiative. And if you're interested in starting the Reimagine journey in 2021, get in touch. Get in touch this month as soon as you can, please. And we can talk this through and see whether that's the right thing to help you. And it's OK to let one way of being church die and for something new to be born. Some of our churches may need to close. 
some of our churches may need to be completely relaunched. And that's all right. It's okay to let things die. But don't just do so and say that's the end. Do so in the expectation of resurrection. Because we are a resurrection people. We have a God of resurrection. And so that's why I'm encouraging us to focus on Easter. Or maybe Pentecost. We'll have to see when the time is right. But to actually actively plan a reboot. Will you do that with me in 2021? Let's pray together as we close. God, we offer to you our lives, our churches, our communities. We thank you that you've been with us all the way through 2020 in the ups and the downs, the challenges we faced. And you've been teaching us, transforming us, changing us. Lord, will you lead us onwards into being the renewed church that you call us to be? Will you lead us and speak to us and give us courage to embrace change, to be a little bit more radical, to get back to the roots of what it is to be followers of Jesus and to understand what that means in the 2020s, in this very different world in which we're now living? Lord, will you raise up the resources needed, the leaders, the people, the finances? Will you help us to be wise about our use of buildings and to allow them to be servants, not masters? And God, will you give us courage and hope and faith to trust that the new church you want to raise up this year is even more glorious than the church that existed this time last year. To the glory of your name. Amen.